Spirit. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another Transformers Theory. Today's is going to answer a question that has been on a lot of fans' minds lately. That being how exactly the Autobots get to Peru in Transformers Rise of the Beasts. The general consensus that we have so far is that the Autobots start off in New York, and once they're overrun by the Terracons, they travel to Peru to team up with the Maximals in order to permanently put down the Terracon threat. Now, at this time, we have yet to receive an official explanation as to how the Autobots traveled the 3,446 mile distance from New York to Peru. However, we may actually already know the answer thanks to some casting reveals. You see, roughly an hour after the Rise of the Beast trailer dropped, Deadline posted an article talking about the voice cast for the film. Something that stood out amongst the list was that John DiMaggio, a famous voice actor who has voiced several Transformers characters in the past, most notably Leadfoot from Transformers Dark of the Moon, Crosshairs from Transformers Age of Extinction and The Last Knight, and Nitro Zeus from Transformers The Last Knight, will be voicing a new character in Rise of the Beasts, that character being Stratosphere. And this character has a very interesting history in the Transformers mythos, since he never appeared in any of the films and was created solely for the Revenge of the Fallen toy line. You see, Hasbro has this tendency to turn non-transforming vehicles that starred in the Transformers films into heroic Autobots or evil Decepticons. For example, the tow truck Michaela Baines uses to move Bumblebee in the Transformers 2007 movie was turned into the heroic Autobot Longarm. The Hong Kong Police Eurocopter from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen was turned into the evil Decepticon Tail Whip, and the 2013 Chevy Sonic RS rally car from Transformers Age of Extinction was turned into the heroic Autobot Rollbar. Stratosphere is a byproduct of this phenomenon since his creation was inspired by the Boeing C-17A Globemaster III that dropped Optimus Prime into Shanghai. His toy came with a little transforming Optimus Prime minifigure that could fit into the cargo hold so fans could recreate the scene from the movie. Funny enough to get around paying Boeing for the Globemaster license, Hasbro made Stratosphere's military transport plane an amalgamation of a C-130 Hercules for the body, a C-17 Globemaster III for the wings, the cockpit of a C-5 Galaxy, and the tail of an Antonov AN-255. With Stratosphere being a toy-only character, he would be featured in the Titan movie comics. In the issue Head in the Cloud, Stratosphere lost contact with Nest Headquarters when he flew through an anticipated bank of heavy clouds over a mountain range. The cloud bank proved artificial, created by the Decepticons in order to hide their operation to reconstruct Devastator. After being swatted out of the sky by the Behemoth, Stratosphere fought all the Decepticon ground forces, and later he called in an airstrike so Devastator could be destroyed once and for all. The last piece of tie-in media Stratosphere would appear in would be the Transformers Dark of the Moon tie-in video game, which served as a prequel to the movie. In the game, Stratosphere gave Bumblebee a ride to the Soviet relay facility in Russia, and would later be seen stationed in a nest base located in an icy ravine in Nepal, where he would receive the mech tech that was going to be sent to Optimus Prime. In Chapter 5 of the game, you play as Starscream and you're tasked by Megatron to steal the mech tech Stratosphere is transporting. And after a very fun dogfight with several aerial bots and Stratosphere himself, you steal the mech tech and blow up Stratosphere from the inside causing him to lose control and plummet out of the sky. This would be the last we would ever hear or see of Stratosphere for nearly 12 years now. And if we circle back to the question of how the Autobots will get to Peru, considering that Stratosphere has historically been a cargo plane, I think it is safe to say that this new incarnation of him will also be a cargo plane, thus explaining how the Autobots traveled from New York to Peru since Stratosphere transported them. Now something I want to touch base on is the size of Stratosphere. Considering that he's going to be a cargo plane, this means that his robot mode is going to be huge compared to everyone else. For reference, here is a fan-made scale chart made by Steampunk13 on TFW2005. As you guys can see, he's going to be massive compared to everyone else. He's basically the equivalent to Giant Man from the MCU. This begs the question if he's going to partake in any battle, since if he does, it's probably going to be very one-sided. If he does end up joining the fight, my bet is that he's going to be the one to disable this massive structure. Now, unfortunately at this time, we don't have any more information on Stratosphere. However, it's likely that he's going to be the one to transport the bots to Peru. 
Hopefully, when the next trailer drops, likely at this upcoming Super Bowl, we will get a glimpse of Stratosphere in it since he's such a cool character and I cannot wait to see him finally make his live-action appearance. And just like that, now you know that Stratosphere is likely to one to transport the Autobots to Peru. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. You guys are the reason why Theorymiss has continued to get bigger and better, so a big fat thank you to all of you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving a like a rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, hit that outro. Thank you.